Hi, I'm here to talk to you about cells and organelles inside of them. Organelles are small structures that are usually enclosed inside a membrane or a lipid covering and they have a specific function or job that they do for the cell. The cell is surrounded by a cell membrane and the, the membrane itself is made out of lipids and on each side of these lipids you can kind of see here's here's the cell inside is the liquid inside it and there's the cell membrane surrounding it so this cell membrane what it does is really controls what can go in and out of the cell so if there's a little oxygen molecule here it might be able to pass through but then if there's a really big molecule like a sugar molecule it would normally just bounce off. But there are certain proteins in the cell membrane that can help get it through, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Here's the cell wall, and the cell wall is found in plant cells and some other types of cells, but usually not in animal cells. And what the cell wall does is it's on the outside of the cell membrane, and it helps give shape and support to the cell and since plants fluctuate more in the amount of water that they have inside of them, this, this keeps it from stretching too much or from shrinking too much and kind of holding its shape. And that uh, cell wall is surrounding it. It's made out of larger carbohydrates such as cellulose and pectin. Next we have the nucleus. And the nucleus is found kind of in the middle of the cell and it's sometimes called the control center of the cell. The nucleus has uh, a membrane, or nuclear envelope, and that nuclear envelope is right here and it surrounds it, and that kind of keeps the nucleus separate from what else is outside of the nucleus or the cytoplasm. Inside the nucleus is something else called the nucleolus, and the nucleolus is where ribosomes, which we'll talk about later, that's where they're made. And then there's also some stuff called chromatin. And chromatin is right in here. And chromatin is really just wound up DNA. And we'll talk more about DNA in future lessons, but that stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And it has the instructions for making proteins, or basically has the instructions for how to run the cell. So that's why the nucleus is therefore called the control center of the cell. Next we have the endoplasmic reticulum, and you can see the endoplasmic reticulum is this series of passageways that surrounds the nucleus. Here's the nucleus, and the endoplasmic reticulum surrounds it. These little dots on the endoplasmic reticulum, those are ribosomes. We talked about those before, and remember they're made in here, and a lot of them are dotted on the endoplasmic reticulum. So the endoplasmic reticulum serves as a passageway so that when proteins are made, they can easily be moved around. And uh, this is a little beyond seventh grade science, but the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the part that has ribosomes. So the rough ER is right down here. You can see there's all sorts of ribosomes on it. And then there's also a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and that's right over here and the big difference in their jobs is because there's ribosomes here this is where proteins usually get made and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is where a lot of lipids are made and that's a type of organic molecule the little membranes including the cell membrane are made out of lipids and a lot of those lipids are made here all right next we're on to ribosomes so you can see those ribosomes are down here, and they're dotting over the endoplasmic reticulum. There's also some free ribosomes throughout the cell. They're not in this diagram, but in cells, there are these little dots. And what the ribosome is, is it's a little organelle, and you can see right here, this thing is running through it, and these other things are bringing stuff in, and you can see it's making something out of the top. What the ribosome is doing is it's reading RNA. Now, RNA is part of a copy of the DNA. So the DNA 
makes RNA, and the RNA comes out to the little ribosome. The ribosome reads it, and that tells it what order to put amino acids together, and it ends up building a protein. So the short version is ribosomes, they make proteins. And proteins are what most of your organelles and all the parts of the cells are made of. Next we have the Golgi body. And the Golgi body is sometimes called the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi body is right here. It's this structure that's kind of floating around. It looks kind of similar in shape to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, but it's not surrounding the nucleus. It can be floating somewhere else in the cytoplasm. And what the Golgi body does is it packages big molecules so that then they can be moved to other places in the cell. And some of those big molecules are proteins. So if the protein goes to the Golgi body, it might wrap that little protein in a membrane, and then that can get shipped to other places of the cell, or maybe it just goes right to the cell membrane, and then that protein can go out of the cell to some other place. Or maybe it stays right in the cell membrane right there. Next is the vacuole. The vacuole you can see here in a plant cell is quite large. In the animal cell it's quite small. And what a vacuole holds, it's colored blue in here because it's supposed to have water in it. Uh, it also stores any food or carbohydrates or other molecules the cell might need and it also stores some waste products. Uh, the vacuole, like I said before, in a plant cell is usually much larger than in an animal cell. Next we have a chloroplast and a chloroplast has it has the pigment chlorophyll in it. And chlorophyll gives the chloroplast a green color. It's one of the few organelles that on every drawing, the color that the artist chose is the real color. There's a lot of chloroplasts in plant cells, and what chloroplasts do is that's where the process of photosynthesis takes place. And for our purposes here, we'll just briefly touch on photosynthesis. That's when light energy shines into the cell, and the chloroplast uses light energy and then can change carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and sugar. Here's a picture of some chloroplasts. Uh, the chloroplasts inside, right here you can see the cell wall of a cell. And then inside the cell wall, each one of these little green discs is a chloroplast. So you can see there's a whole bunch in all of these different cells. And this is probably taken from a leaf cell. Next we have the mitochondria. Mitochondria is plural for mitochondrion. And the mitochondria is sometimes called the powerhouse of the cell. And that's because it's where uh, cell energy and uh, the energy form, the chemical energy that cells use, is called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. In this little drawing that shows that there's two mitochondria, there's generally quite a few, and mitochondria are found in plant and animal cells, and what they can do is they then convert sugar, or glucose, and oxygen into ATP, and then they create the byproducts of carbon dioxide and water. And here's a picture of a mitochondria. You can see right here, they're kind of round or oval shaped, and they have these little uh, membranes inside of them that create these little passageways. And that's where a lot of the chemical reactions take place that make ATP. All right, next is the lysosome. Sometimes the lysosome is called the stomach of the cell. And that's because that's where large molecules, often large carbohydrates, are broken down into smaller molecules that then the cell can use. The cytoplasm. On this picture, it doesn't actually show the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is this gel-like fluid 
that is in between the cell membrane right here and any of the organelles. And that's what all of these organelles are suspended in. Everything's floating in the cytoplasm. And there's a bunch of cell processes that take place in the cytoplasm, like cell division and glycosis. Last, we have the cytoskeleton. And the cytoskeleton usually isn't in a lot of diagrams. If we go back to this previous diagram, you don't see the cytoskeleton. But here we do. And in this cell, um, this has been lit up, so you can see a couple things. First of all, in each of these cells, here's the nucleus. So the blue thing is the nucleus. The microtubules, which are part of the cytoskeleton, are green. So any of the green are these really thin microtubules stretching throughout the cytoplasm, and of course organelles float inside of there. And then the microfilaments are the even smaller red structures. And you can see the red structures are kind of around the cell membrane, and the microtubules are stretching throughout. So there's a bunch of the different cell organelles. Obviously, if you take biology in high school or college, it goes a little more in depth, and you learn about some of the smaller organelles. But here's an overview of the major ones for seventh grade life science.